All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Today I went ahead and pulled a few more clips for you guys and I'm gonna walk through uh, one of the techniques that I do that helps me catch a few more fish out of some holes. I did this a lot in, uh, in Idaho, so I wanted to go ahead and show you. I didn't show all these clips um, just to kind of keep the videos kind of short um, between 15 minutes and 20 minutes, but uh, I'll link each one of these as far as where the trip was. And if you guys wanna see the full video, they'll be, uh, you know, they'll be up in the top of the screen, whatever. So first, first uh, stop was the first day in Idaho and I found this really, really pretty hole. Lots of places for the fish to hide. A uh, lot of success with the dropper. Um, fish were, you know, some bugs in the air. They were kind of looking at the dry, but they were really taking the dropper. What I like to do when I'm when this happens after I fish through a hole several times, and I think I've given every fish in the hole a chance to at least, you know, take a take a swipe at, a, at the dry or uh, look at the dropper. I like to cut my my nymphs off. I tie in a small little streamer, rest the hole a little bit and then go back in and you can see here lots of fish on the uh, the dropper great day great afternoon but uh as it got slower i decided hey it's time to switch it up let's see if there are any other fish down there on the bottom who uh have basically passed on the offering that you know that's on the surface right now or the dropper so uh i rest the hole i already dry droppered and um had a good day doing that unless i see some fish rising uh give me a reason to switch it up and do maybe a dry fly or something uh i'm just gonna just gonna throw this little small uh, sparkle bugger. See me pick up some fish. Looking along that wall over there. So what I do when I cut my uh, nymphs off is I cut them about the 2x spot in my leader and I tie in a streamer right there. I like a small black sparkle bugger. It's easy tie. Fly Fish Food has a really great tutorial. But uh, it's something I don't mind casting close to cover. Uh, and if for whatever reason I break it off, I'm not, you know, I'm not heartbroken. Like I said, these are these are my I guess my motto is to keep the, the flies as simple as possible. They're just super effective, but they don't take a lot of time. So, like I said, I'm gonna fish them tight to cover, and if every now and then one ends up in a tree or on a on a rock and I don't get it back, uh, I'm not you know I'm not I'm not super uh, frustrated with that. Good deal. Fishing barbless hook, so it pops off as soon as it let happen slack. Get my hands wet. He's still pretty fired up. Come on, dude. Come on. I talk to me. So, in this video, I'm fishing an eight and a half foot four weight. I've talked about that in this video, the uh, three rods right. that I recommend. But the four weight gives me a chance to fish the dry dropper really, really well, but also switch up to a streamer rig when I want to. But uh, you can see I switch off and immediately start picking up fish. These are all fish that had a chance of the dry and a chance of the dropper. And I pulled a couple more clips and I'll walk through those again because this is definitely a technique that helps me catch some fish uh, and it might help you guys as well. Fired up fish. <laughs> That's awesome. But uh, this was a great hole. Like I said, tons of fish on the dropper. Um, and then I just went ahead and switched into a uh, to a to a streamer and finished this whole hole off. This is kind of one of those things where I do pretty often. If I feel like there should be some more fish down there. Um, I'll go ahead and switch up and give them something completely different than what they've seen. I don't want to offer them any more nymphs. I want to give them something a little bit more juicy, I guess, if you would say, right? All right, so I've uh, moved up a little bit further in this stream, same watershed, uh, super cool hole, big piece of rock, some cover, uh, fish in the dry dropper again, and I don't know, maybe within the third or second cast, I find a fish on the dropper. Um, obviously, they've you know passed on the dry, picked up the dropper. I give it a couple more casts, don't find any fish, so I feel like it's time. It's a good time to go ahead and switch up. So I kind of slowly make my way up and um, I go ahead and. Cut off my nymphs and switch into a uh, switch back to a 
uh, that small sparkle bugger, that black sparkle bugger. So this was this was a fun little hole uh, in between these two laydowns. I spent probably 20 minutes here, caught several fish. They were responding to the dry, some were responding to the dropper. But it, it, it kind of got slow. I felt like there should be some other fish in here. It's just a really good hole. So I did the same thing. I cut my leader at about the uh, seven and a half foot spot, whereas the, the, it transitions between two X and three X. Um, and I tie in my, my streamer. Uh, on the very first cast, I catch a, a bull trout, which was pretty cool. Um, but I didn't have the camera on, so all I have is the release. I think that's my first bull trout. Wasn't fishing for him. Just trying to clean up any fish down there that didn't want to eat the dryer than that. When I do this, what I try to do is I tie back in and I just basically switch back and forth. Um, I'll leave my tippet on, my nymphs, and I just tie that tippet back into my leader. I either use an Orvis tippet knot, or if I'm going to do this a lot, that's, that's a great place to put a tippet ring because you can tie like your 2X in, so a 7.5 foot 2X leader, you can tie that into the tippet ring, and then you can tie your maybe a foot and a half of 3X and a foot of 4X to your first fly. And if you cut below your tippet ring, your nymphs still have you know, your 3X and your 4X to your, your dry fly. And then you can tie on maybe a foot, 15 inches of 2X or 3X or whatever you want to fish to your streamer. And then when you cut your streamer off, you do the same thing. Just leave that tippet to your streamer. And then from there on, you can just tie back into your tippet ring and not have to worry about destroying your leader. On a floating line, that gives you a great jigging action. I've talked about some, some of that kind of technique stuff in a different video on smallmouth fishing. I'll link that here. Uh, you guys can check it out. Basically, I'm fishing that streamer on a floating line, so I'm relying on more of a jigging action. Well, this is what I put the streamer on for. See, are there any fish down there? All I do from this point on is basically just, it, when I'm fishing, I just clip back into that tippet ring or tie back in with an Orvis tippet knot, and I just switch constantly between the streamer and the dry dropper rig, and it allows me to just continue to fish and pick up fish that maybe have passed on your nymphs, maybe have passed on your dry fly, that you might be able to pick up a few fish if you switch up techniques and do something completely different than what they've seen, right? They've seen nymphs come by, they've seen uh, dry flies come by. Now you might pick up a better fish on the streamer rig. And I finished off this whole video. Cool little spot. Uh, another day doing the same thing. Beautiful hole. Picked up two fish quickly on the dry. Um, and then I was like, you know what? It's just, it's just too pretty of a hole. Let me switch up to the, uh, the streamer. And again, find a pretty fish just kind of hanging out uh, in the middle of that hole. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's pretty much all this was. Um, like I said, I switch up and cut into my leader, add on a streamer pretty often. Uh, and it helps me pick up a couple extra fish. Hopefully it helps out somebody. Hope you guys put a couple more fish in the net. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again soon.